Earlier, we showed you some feature races from Thunder Mountain Speedway. So let's return to the track for more racing action. The 410 Sprints return to action at Thunder Mountain with the red number five of Chuck Bryan moving to the front of the field from his number one starting position. The 17 of Jeff Taylor slides into second with the 42 of John Smith in close pursuit. After a lap four restart, the 25 of Jimmy Seeger charges to the outside of Smith in turn one and moves up to third. Then he dives under Taylor in turn three to gain the runner-up spot behind Bryan. Another restart allows Seeger to close the gap on Bryan. Seeger goes to the outside down the backstretch to take the top spot before they enter turn three. A few laps later, Dan Shetler in the red number seven overtakes Taylor for fourth place just as they go into turn three. A late caution sets up a two-lap shootout, but instead of racing Seeger for the lead, Brian instead has to fend off Smith as Smith pinches it low in one and two. Brian holds the position, but Seeger has checked out on his way to picking up his first victory of the season. Congratulations, Jimmy, on the win there. Uh, you showed some patience there and worked your way up through the field. Uh, it seems like the car got pretty hooked up there on the top. Uh, well, I mean, uh, thanks thanks for congratulating me there. But, uh, yeah, I definitely got hooked up. Uh, once I found the top there in the beginning, I had uh, I had to make some adjustments in the beginning of the race. I didn't know the cushion was there, but, uh, you know, once I found it, you know, I'd, I, uh, I definitely used it to my advantage, and, uh, you know, it, it, it seemed to work. Now you're back to racing on a fairly regular basis here after a few years off. Things seem to be coming together and uh, seem to get the car really set up well. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, most of that thanks is, I mean, uh, we, were, we were starting to go backwards actually in the beginning of the year. Uh, just, just, we were doing decent, but, uh, you know, not, not where I want to run, but, uh, you know, we, we made a phone call to Moon Bowers and uh, we, he kind of set us on the right track and, uh, you know, Friday night was, you know, that was that showed what we were missing and uh, the stability of my car come back to me and now I can drive a straight race car instead of, you know, you know, being almost out of control. You know, it was getting it was getting to be actually uh, it, it was kind of hard for us to, you know, get, gather our stuff back up and go to the races every weekend with with an ill handling car, you know, because we, we weren't figuring things out. and. Uh, he helped us out and our guys just kind of took over from there and you know, it, it really worked. I know you said in your winning interview, you really liked what they did to the track. Uh, yeah, definitely from uh, from the last time that track was, it was, it, man, it was so slick and uh, I led just about every lap of that race and uh, old Shetler got me on the last two laps. I was just like, oh no, you know, but uh, definitely, I mean, I, I like cush I like to run the cushion, you know, that's where I, I like to run the top of the tracks, but uh, you know, it was there for me the other night. They, you know, they did a perfect job running the track in. Uh, I can't, I can't say anything else for them guys. It, it was great. Your top five are Jimmy Seeger, Chuck Bryan, John Smith, Dan Shetler, and Bill Jones. At the start of the Pure Stock feature, Jason Joyner in the 619 would get to the lead early as he makes his way around pole sitter Sam McClellan. Kyle Shannon in the white number one is always a threat to win. After starting deep in the field. Here he passes Steve Arthurs for third. Going into one and two, he pulls alongside Mike Calhoun. As they exit the turn, Shannon powers off of the bottom on his way to taking over the second spot. In the closing laps, Shannon has the lead with Sean Lindemuth in the 54 battling Joyner for second. At the line, there's contact sending Lindemuth into the wall. Lindemuth would eventually park the 54 car. With a couple of laps to go, Chad Ramsey is challenging Joyner for second place. But just as he gets the position, he loses the handle in three and four, collecting Joyner and allowing Arthurs to take over second. Shannon would hold on for the win, followed by Arthurs, McClellan, Zach Gustafson, and Lori Weaver. At Clinton County Raceway on Wednesday, the first lap was indicative of the first half of the race. There were eight cautions in the first 11 laps. Once things settled down, Todd Baumgardner was in control of the race, although he would have Mitch Hack in the seven to contend with in the latter stages of the race. In a one-lap shootout, Baumgartner held on for the win. Todd, congratulations on the win and happy birthday. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, it was a pretty good run tonight there. We lucked out uh, getting the start up front and was able to hold the spot there. There was an awful lot of cautions. I thought I was going to be, uh, you know, somebody get me there because of my tires, but we were able to hold on to it. So. Yeah, you didn't see the carnage behind you, but thanks to a good run in the heat race, you got to stay ahead of all that mess. Yeah, yeah. we. Had the luck of the draw tonight, you know what I mean? There's, I'd rather be lucky and good. 
Seems like on the restarts you were protecting the low side. Yeah, I wanted to make sure nobody ducked under me there, you know, and once I got going, you know, I could drift up the track a little bit and try to catch that cushion. It, uh, it helped there. Hoffner, he, uh, he had a good run going there. He had a little bad luck. Uh, I think he, he would have got me there if it wasn't a caution, you know, but uh, it's, it's a lucky game, I guess. I understand you want to send some special wishes to someone. Yeah, my uh, partner in this game, he's never missed a race with me there. He was in a serious auto accident there Friday and wasn't able to be here tonight. But I want to say special thanks to him and Kirk Queen. And uh, thanks for helping me all the time there. So this one goes out to him. The top five looks like this. Baumgartner, Hack, Billy Esch, George Foltz, and Jim Yoder. We now go to Hummingbird Speedway. On the opening lap of the late model feature, Luke Hofner in the orange 15 wastes no time in taking the lead from Jake Shady as they exit turn two. Ten laps in, Chris Farrell is running third with the 812 of John Chesnalovich Jr. pressuring for the position. Cody Schultz tries to get around with Chesnalovich off of turn four, but there's contact. However, the 812 only loses one spot. But later, Schultz's top five run came to an end when he broke a right front tie rod, nosing the car into the wall. On the restart, with Hoffner still leading, Shady drives it hard into turn one, turning Hoffner and bringing most of the field to a stop. So on the next restart, we now have Chris Farrell in second. He pushes high in the turn, opening the door for Eric Moore in the double zero to take over second place. Moore ran side by side with Hoffner for a number of laps, but Hoffner opened up a gap to take the checkers. Chris Farrell held on to third, followed by Dwayne Brooks and Chesnalovich. In the street stocks, Brian Red in the 28 and Gary Little in the number two ran up front most of the night, but Joe Cott in the 37 takes the lead from Red late in the race. Cott, who started 13th, picked up his second win in a row and fifth of the season. Here's the top five as we go to break. 